All right, so we are backstage uh, somewhere where I didn't think I was going to be actually when I went to go and see this guy uh, uh -huh. just the other day. Mm -hmm. I was watching him on stage and now I'm backstage. Uh, Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, definitely. How, How you are doing? you feeling? I'm good. Yeah, we finna have a blast. I'm feeling good back here. Well, I know you're super cozy now, but um, on stage, you're giving us full looks. Yeah. You turn into uh, Kung Fu Kenny, but I want to know what you <laughs> do to prepare, uh, you know, for, for performance. Like, what is your ritual? Do you have one? A uh, whole lot of this right here that you got. This is yours? This green tea? It's not my green tea, actually, but I do yeah. enjoy a green tea. A whole lot of that right there, because there's a lot of rapping and melody going on for an hour and 30, some change, you know? So that... Uh, a lot of oldies playing in the background. Okay, what are you Backstage, listening to? Backstage, a lot of Marvin Gaye, Teddy Pendergrass, uh, Prince. All these folks that's on this wall, you got a little bit of Tupac, and I might mix a little rap in there. But, you know, just something that I can feel good about, you know, and think about where I was at as a fan listening to these artists and mm -hmm. going out there and reciprocating the energy of knowing how the fans feel about me being on stage you know yeah yeah well that's the thing because you know um there are particular moments of your set i mean to be fair throughout your whole set you know you could just stop rapping and people are going to carry on for you yeah 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 it's i mean love. that must be the most surreal thing to experience yeah that's that's the most amazing part you know that these words these ideas these these albums they just come from a single thought and this thought can be made in my bedroom on a toilet <laughs> <laughs> anywhere i'm driving and then next thing i know six months later they can be all around the world and people are sharing the same thought you know in that same moment that's that's the greatest part i know you spend a lot of time in the uk in uh -huh. fact you've made quite a few of your videos here yeah without people realizing do you find that you're able to kind of be undercover kenny when you are in the uk were you able <laughs> to kind of slip in into civilian life without anyone being like hang on a minute I swear that guy's kendrick lamar yeah it's a it's a different type of uh energy you know they um you know people are human and, and you know they they show love and they show grace when i'm out there but at the same time they give you respect too mm -hmm. you know and that's something that i can really appreciate because at the end of the day you know i'm i'm a, I'm a, I'm a artist um entertainer but you know i have feelings and, and and you know you you want to be a song called Phil, I yeah mean. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be around people that make you feel like you know you your people too well for sure and that you're definitely getting a lot of that love on this damn tour it's been absolutely huge and like everything is a 10 across the board now the art direction this the the general creativity of it you know the 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 videos that you've made like stepping yeah. into stepping into your role how long did it take to plan this tour our whole process is making the music it's a process of creating the visuals too, whether we putting them down on paper or it's just ideas that's popping up. So it could be in the process of making a song like Lust. Um, me and my partners, we, we sit down and create concepts around that and that eventually turned to something that's on stage. Um, it's all a working process and it's always evolving. So it can be in the same process of six months to a year of creating a tour without us even knowing. So by the time we get to the end of the album, we say, okay, we know exactly what we want to do. And what about song selection? Because you are like four albums deep now, in yeah. theory. Um, how are you going about picking those songs? And how do you think, okay, I'm going to hit them with this one first, <laughs> and this one, and this one? Because yeah. there's so much to choose from. Definitely. That takes a lot of um, practice and timing, you know, to know what moves the crowd. And also me being very aware of what people love and, and the tempos of my record and what you know takes them on a whole roller coaster and brings them back that's years of just being on stage from Kendrick Lamar EP to even me being a hype man you know for J-Rock when we first started just watching and feeling the temperature so now I get to the point 10 years later I, I can gauge my core audience I can gauge you know newer fans I know when to play on certain emotions when I'm on that stage and um yeah, that's just all experience, and I give them the credit for that because I've been booed before, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Who dared to yeah. boo Kendrick Lamar? Yeah, if it happened, it happened. Is this when you first started When out? I first started, for sure. And, and how did you deal with that? Because, I mean, you could have easily internalized that and thought, mm, maybe I'm going to quit. How did you kind well, of ignore that negative energy? Well, it was one of them things. I hear, I hear these stories all the time where they feel like, the person on stage wasn't doing good. I knew I was doing good, right? <laughs> but for new artists, it's a place where people don't necessarily know what they like, you know? And sometimes 
to respect a certain artist, it have to be in the cool factor. You know, I wasn't in the cool factor yet, so they don't know what to think. Yeah, it may sound good to them, but they'll look around and be like, is they who bobbing their head? Then, oh, nobody bob. I'm not bobbing my head. I'm not clapping either, you know. So a person make a remark in the crowd, and then it draws attention. They feel like, okay, I belong. I belong to this audience, you know, and, yeah, and there you go. Get off the stage. Let's talk about Wakanda. Wakanda forever. Yeah. Let's talk about Black Panther. Yeah, let's this do it. Film has become almost bigger than a movie, and mm-hmm. you're you're in part you're part of that in a huge mm-hmm. way with the music. Definitely. How honored are you? Were uh, you in fact to be part of the soundtrack for Black Panther? It's a privilege. It's a privilege. You know, this this is the capacity. You know, not even talk about the music, just the movie and and the cast and the director Ryan. Um, I think it's something that not only stands within this moment, but stands within time. We talking about timeless films and things that's going to curate after the product, after this film, and, and we can get to the music. I just want to make sure that I can complement that, you know, and, and and be a part of that in the best way I could. Were you given the full movie to watch before you wrote the songs or were you just given little sneaky bits of Ryan like, okay, I'm yeah. going to give you this little scene with Chadwick, yeah. write a song, no. look at Lupita, write a song, what, right. was, the, what no. was the situation? Fortunately and unfortunately, yes, I got, I got to see the movie and uh, it was just, it impacted me the same way it's impacting everyone else. So with that honor and that privilege, um, I had got a little bit of heads up on the creative, I knew where I wanted to go, I wanted to embody something that that represented the black our black culture but it also represent the creative side in the movie where you have these two characters and when you hear the songs you hear the narratives of their personality you know songs like uh the intro black panther you hear that t'challa you hear um king's dead and just playing on that and that that's something that i always love to do be as creative as possible in merging two worlds well, you definitely feel that. I mean, particularly on um, Pray For Me, when we play that song on, on my show, we enjoy the la 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 la. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's, I mean, were you, I'm guessing you're inspired by South African music. Yeah. That's that, actually, that piece right there was an uh, um, idea that we can't put down. And that took my verse to the next level, just hearing that. You know, certain little accents, that's what I love about collaborations. I don't think collaboration should be based off just the names. It should be based off the energy that's given on the track. And me hearing We Can't Do That, it'll spark something in my pen to come with the craziest verse. You know, a verse that I feel like lives to the potential of just that piece Mm -hmm. in the song. Like, damn, he knows what's going on the same way I know it. That's, that's... That's a uh, that's not just a sound. That's culture, you know. Dare I ask? Dare you ask? In fact, Ryan, when the sequel comes through, you're gonna try and get yourself a little cameo in this Come movie. Come on, I got to now. Yeah, I mean, you have to. <laughs> would you play a villain? Would you play? Would you play one of the good guys? Um, you're gonna shave your head off and become a, one of the female warriors, man. Right. <laughs> um, let me see. What would I? I really enjoy Killmonger's character, just off the simple fact, you know, he he was a villain, but. Came with some real talk. He came with some real, and you, 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 he was dropping them jewels, and you got to be aware of what's going on, you know. So it, it was a, he was a villain, but he was loved, you know, and and and, and misunderstood. So if I could, I, I play a killmonger for sure. And uh, what about the character of Kung Fu Kenny? Are you going to try and develop that more into <laughs> anything, a kid's cartoon, perhaps? Yeah, I don't know. That would be tight. Uh, Kung Fu Kenny is just, you know, me of course having a love for Kung Fu movies. I grew up off legendary and i'm not just talking about bruce lee i'm talking about five guillotines deadly venoms that's just something that's always been a part of me so by the time um i journeyed into this new wave of music i was doing it felt like an alter ego but still a part of me as well i would like to see a kung fu kenny cartoon yeah i gotta get my stretching and all that up first because i might break a leg yeah yeah i gotta have you had any have you had any sure. formal training whatsoever? <laughs> nah, no formal training. I actually wanted to do it as a kid, but we walked past that karate class like every day. Mom's was like, "Nope, we ain't got no money for that." <laughs> <laughs> but look, maybe now you could maybe now's the time yeah, to get into it, right, you know. Right. Exactly. I wanted to talk to you about um, your Grammy performance because, uh-huh. I mean, look, that people use the phrase break the internet, but every time you perform, mm-hmm. everyone's always got something to say because you've got something to say. What was your Thank process? You. Um, I mean, behind getting you two involved and Dave Chappelle involved? When I look at performances and I, and I look at 
the the art and the the storyline. I always go back to someone like Prince or someone like Michael. You know, how can I take the music and make it a complete visual for people who ain't never even heard the song? That's who I want to really dive in. If you know the song, you're going to already be engaged. But what about the people that don't know Kendrick Lamar is? You know, so however far the, the boundaries I can push it and I can go to, I'm going to try to break all type of rules in order to get that point across. Well, you definitely did with the, uh, obviously, the added help of uh, Dave Chappelle, who we yeah, love. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I loved what he said when he said, uh, look, the only thing more frightening than mm. watching <laughs> yeah. a black man be honest in America is being an honest black man in America. Yeah. I mean... Definitely. We um <laughs> Did he surprise that? Did he spring that on you in the performance? Did you knew he was gonna say that? No, I knew we had so much I mean the rehearsals of doing this, it was too many laughs, you know, <laughs> and he could have went all day with jokes but the undertone of truth behind it. And that was the whole point of the you know, performance. You're being entertained, you know. I'm, I'm having fun and, 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 you know, I'm dancing around the stage, but don't get it twisted. There's a whole lot of truth going on in these words. There's a whole lot of truth going on in the body language and the movements and, you know, the people that's on stage. You know, we all stand for something. We're talking about Bono. We're talking about Dave Chappelle. You know, it's always an undertone under it. Well, I think that's something that people have always appreciated about you is that you've always been very, you know, conscious. And it's weird because I think, you know, in 2018, we're very much in this era of hashtag woke. Everyone's yeah, obsessed yeah. with being woke and being like, I believe this. <laughs> I mean, do you find that it's almost become a, I guess, a trend among artists to be seen as, 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 as to care? Well, everything becomes, you know, a trend when... Um, I want to say uh, the mainstream get a hold to it and, you know, it's cool to say things. But, you know, that's something that you're going to have to deal with, you know, when you step into these conversations and you really put to the test and go out here and you have to practice what you preach, you know. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea of, you know, just saying things, it goes out the door, you know, when you step into a reality. You can say whatever you want to say on the Internet. But it's going to come a time where you have to put, money where your mouth is because there's people out there that's really hurt and really need knowledge and really need understanding and you got to give them that for sure i mean look you clearly are a man of your word and you're inspired by men well people of their word because we're in your dressing room right now yeah i'm looking at pictures of muhammad ali i'm mm -hmm. looking at pictures of pack and you know those two in particular mm -hmm. didn't miss didn't mess about with it oh, nah. with, with their message and yeah i mean talking about pack in particular look, people look at you and they're like you know Kendrick, he's new king of, of West Coast rap, but I know you're right. looking at that guy like, but no, he's, I mean, how, yeah. how does it make you feel when you have these sorts of comparisons? Um, it's, it's a great feeling, but ultimately it just lets me know the foundation that, you know, I'm looking at Tupac, this guy has laid. I was just talking to my folks about a week ago about how great this man was, but he never got to experience his full potential due to the tragedy, you know, of his life. You know, I've been around the world able to see Africa, you know, uh, China, come to London, come to the UK, um, Germany. Tupac didn't get a chance to do that, you know? And, and, and me being right here right now is appreciation and, 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 you know, to carry my talents around the world is, is strictly because of the foundation he laid. So, That's his legacy. I, right. I have to be out here. I have to be out here, you know, saying something and, and, you know, pushing my talents how far it may go, you know, because of what he's done. You know, that's the least I can do. And I know you're going to be coming to Reading and Leeds. Yeah. So some of your headlining. That mm -hmm. is going to be it's absolutely be huge. Now, again, we're, it's such an interesting era in music because, you know, when it comes to these big festivals, you're seeing more and more hip hop acts mm -hmm. headline. And that probably wasn't happening mm -mm. five to ten years ago. Like, Why do you think that hip hop is such a dominant force in popular culture right now, especially at these types of festivals? It's always been that. I've, I've always said this. Hip hop has always moved, you know, the needle and and. Going back to the word trend, I don't even like to say it's a trend because it's always been underground. Even when it got to, to you know, the mainstream light, it's still an underground appeal to it because we say what we want to say. You know, whether you like it, whether you hate it, it's just raw emotions, you know, and you cannot judge people um, for how they feel and them expressing themselves on record, you know, and 
that's always going to have an underground feel. That's always going to be able to inspire people and people that even hate hip hop to be like, I don't like it, but I'm secretly jealous because this person can go on stage and say whatever he want, you know, and inspire the next individual to say whatever they want to say. Well, know? I guess there's a, there's a freedom to it. Isn't yeah, it's definitely a freedom. So with that being said, I've always felt like hip hop curated, you know, the concept of, you know, not only bringing the urban community, the black community, but all walks of life. So when you go on these festivals and you see all these people, you know, it's, it's not by coincidence, you know, they have a respect and, and, and inspired by it. This is it, because your, your crowds are so diverse. Yeah. I really, I really noticed that at the um, at the O2 show. I mean, when you look out there, you're just like, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't think this type of individual would be into yeah. what I do. Do you find do you find that happens quite a lot? Yeah, definitely. And when, in the beginning of my career, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> that, that always blew my mind. Like, you know, these songs came from my mama's uh, kitchen in, in the backyard inside of Compton. And uh, so to go around the world and, you know, see this little white kid rapping <laughs> lyric for lyric, bar for bar, and... and wondering where is he pulling this stuff from but you know I get off stage and he say you know it inspires me um not because I know or how it feels to be where you're from but you know I deal with my own addictions as well it may not be from a gang culture but it may be from abuse at home or you know not feeling uh amongst your peers and once I understood that I said okay it's bigger than just my story you know this story everyone has their own story within my story and they can understand it like that and with that, Kenjit Lamar, thank you so very thank much. Thank you.